Um, so we were going to try and have a leadership retreat this um, Friday, Saturday, but we couldn't synchronize schedules. Um, but regardless, we were going to do this on Sunday, so here, here we are, wanting to share um, some kind of probably long overdue info. I know people have been wanting to know the next next phase, and um, and thanks again for your patience. It's um, yeah, things have just recently come come together despite uh, working on it for months, and um, you know it's always trickier with the pandemic in the background and with getting into agreements with other entities. So, so what what you see here is um, a calendar, and so um, I want to first share where our meeting locations will be, time, and the reason why. And then talk about the why. So, we are DCF, downtown community fellowship. Um, and so we're gonna return to downtown Homestead. How about that? Yeah! I remember like a couple years ago, we are just like, it would be great, but the prices, the prices, we're only thinking in terms of buildings then, you know? But then the pandemic comes, we create, we creatively think about other options. And for the last um, year, we've been outdoors for gatherings, house church, and the like. And so it's like, hey, there's, there's something to this. Um, how much authenticity do we see here, just being a community, any weird place that we can find to gather? Parking lots. Um, tents and front yards, backyards, parks. So, um, so yeah, just thinking like, oh, we can be outdoors, then it's like, cool. Um, maybe there is some space for us in, in downtown Clemson. What I've really enjoyed over the last year plus is the truly public nature of worshiping outdoors. Um, worshiping and training and discipleship. When it's outdoors, um, it's truly like public worship. I mean, that's what every church says, you know, it's Sunday is public worship. Um, but then we're usually locked away in four walls, the doors, and window shut. Um, so it's neat to be out in the open air where the praises get carried on the wind and, um, and in this place too, like we have had a few gatherings here and already and there's people who just cruise through and that's really awesome to be able to, to meet people. There's a lot of like street, yeah, street noises. Case in point. <laughs> Thank you for illustrating. <laughs> but, um, we can add a different kind of joyful noise to the atmosphere. Um, so we'll do we'll do this for the warm months in the fall and in the spring. Um, but as we know from last year, it was a bit frigid when we were trying to do this in the winter. So we're going to be able to winter at uh, Clemson Church of Christ, which if you go down here and then turn, um, Church of Christ is a building right on 93 in front of the, across the street from the intramural fields where our bike center is. Um, so I finally, after years and dozens of conversations, found a church who actually like wants to share space and you know in Clemson that is and like you know be hospitable partner in the gospel um, at least in, in those terms so it's um, it's pretty cool thank you for your endurance 
<laughs> and continuing to seek that out, I know oh, that that's sure. not easy. <laughs> yeah, you're very, very welcome. I'm just more baffled than anything because that was just like standard procedure in the Pacific Northwest. But in there um, for this uh, crazy year of um, COVID, OG COVID is what I'm saying lately. Um, and well, that's the other thing. Like, it was like, okay, in the spring or something, looking towards the fall, um, I just strongly felt that we should still be outdoors, at least for the fall. You know, because like, there's still going to be like people getting vaccinated or not, but then um, it's got to be great to just circumnavigate all of that politically charged stuff by just being outdoors for um, a little bit longer. Um, so that we're just not like gathering, but then awkward and eyeing each other suspiciously, like, are you, aren't you? And what do I think about that? Um, so, but all the more is that um, sound now with um, this Delta variant being something like five times more infectious, is that so? Um, so, so yeah, we, uh, we still need to be safe, cautious, um, and hospitable in the sense of loving our neighbors um, as ourselves. So, why 6 p.m.? That's just going to be one time for the whole year, which is simpler than two different times as we've experienced the last um, while ago. Um, but of course, Clemson Church of Christ will be doing their thing Sunday morning, and so um, there's the evenings available for us there. And so then we just wanted to have the same time here um, for continuity's sake. Have you know, simple, consistent things instead of um, too much, too much change in deviation. Um, so that's gonna the meeting here in the evening is gonna help with um, parking space in the garage because um, the parking tower up there is um, quite full when you know, every other church in this row is having their gathering. Um, we can sleep in, right? That's kind of nice, not just for college students, but you know, how many parents are screaming at their kids, we've got to get to church! <laughs> That's a little counterproductive. Um, so, Seriously, which parents are sleeping in? Josh, are you sleeping in? We didn't do that after that before now. Uh, um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to uh, to be here try try this out. Um, and I think uh, a ministry that we have um, is is being peacemakers in this um, town that is quite divided between town and gown. I know the official story is that it's mutually beneficial, but it's, it's seething at times um, with the animosity uh, between the student body and, um, and the locals. So if and when the people, whoever they are, um, come into our community 
and they see genuine Christian love uh, across the generations, I think that that's going to be a good gospel witness of how there isn't favoritism or classism or any other sort of stratification in the body of Christ. So I don't know exactly what that could look like, but at the very least, um, a signpost a living testimony would be super awesome. Um, a restorative salve um, for this season. What you'll also see on this calendar is that approximately once a month, uh, we're going to have joint services with House of Judah in Seneca. So this is a congregation that you're well familiar with. By this point, we've had relationship with uh, them for four or five years. And um, and they they really want to deepen their relationship and you know that's reciprocal with um, me with us. And um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome to worship and engage in corporate discipleship together uh, with them. So they, like us, like I'm sure gads of other churches, um, have had a pretty significant reduction during this last year. And so we were just talking about like how cool would it be if we could support each other in rebuilding. Um, but beyond that, to have unity gatherings across more um, more visible lines of, um, of ethnicity and um, classes and so on. And again, be a, a living witness, a signpost, as it were, for college students or whomever else, um, that what usually divides the world is not, by God's grace, dividing the church. How often do you see these people play together? Cool. How often do you see these people play together? You know, like, if we can live that out as facets of living the gospel together, um, we really get to exhibit and demonstrate the way of, of Jesus in some pretty, pretty awesome ways. Um, so, so yeah, this and, and what this will look like, our unity gatherings will, will really be. Um, Rhythms, of course, is our language, not theirs. But, um, but like we would do half the rhythms, and they would do half the rhythms. And then imagine, like at the communion table, um, the DCF are doing bread, and, and Judah doing the the cup, for example. Um, blended um, music ensembles, in terms of some of us and some of them, right? and different styles and different songs and um, so it could be really awesome i'm anticipating that um, again they've they've had their their own reduction they've been without a pastor for a while um, they asked me to join their teaching team um, so what that will mostly look like is that when we're with them there um, i'll be Preaching, teaching, um, but even even that can be delegated. It would be awesome to get some other folks um, to speak from the Word of God uh, there. And then sometimes we'll also have their like teaching elders um, preach, teach, and, and so that'll be that'll be awesome. Is how all that'll be um, crafted together. So. The purpose for um, meeting there is to stay in relationship um, with them, continue to partner 
uh, with them to engage in unity gatherings and um, and to do our part in moving the needle forward um, in racial reconciliation. Um, it's, it took often when you're doing something, the fruit will come later. And so, like, our whole spring there, um, the fruit was beginning to show at, at the end. Um, we were able to help a couple uh, by giving them food to make uh, their housing. And then, um, and then we've also come into more relationship with Ann Hope, who is doing a feeding ministry, and we get to join them as often as we want. Um, so you will be hearing about those opportunities as well. Um, but then again, just like being able to have unity gatherings with House of Judah um, this year is just some more some more fruit, and we thought it might be good also to create the opportunity to have some intentional focus, deep conversation uh, around race and reconciliation uh, with our brothers and sisters at House of Judah. So um, critical race theory has just kind of been hot button uh, topic that a lot of people are getting really worked up about. Uh, we want to just come together and, um, you know, read, discuss, pray, dialogue, all in a very civil manner, of course, um, listening well, and through it all, I hope that um, we can dispel that it is a thing um, that nothing is off uh, limits to scrutinize and uh, to see how it might be converted or rendered useful in the gospel. Um, so we want to have just a few few weeks of that intentional discussion and that would really like serve as um, a launching pad for longer study in racial reconciliation through Be the Bridge, which is what we've done before. I've been trying desperately to do it um, again, and uh, by God's grace, it looks like this spring is uh, very, very possible, more feasible than, um, than ever before. Oh, and of course they meet in the morning, and so we'll still be able to uh, have that Sunday morning feel. Uh, I'll actually be there a bit more than what's scheduled here, um, just to help, help them out. Um, but that's again the beauty of staggering, because it's kind of like old school two, two services on a Sunday. Um, so it'll, it'll be a little bit like that um, for me and anybody else who wants to join in. But, but as a as a community, to touch base with them once once a month. Um, Josh, yeah. Can you let us know when you're going to go on other times as well? Yeah, sure. Let's shoot us a text and let us know when you're going to go. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss. Any. Q&A. Before I hand it over to Julie, we will do um, logistics. Oh, I should also just note the uh, this bit of the budget. Um, so this is very broad brush room, and you can have a more detailed. Version or print out if you want it. Um, but since we're just given a bunch of information, I thought we'd put this in here as well. Um, God has been so faithful. Um, our, our 
our revenue has exceeded our expenses this last year, and um, so that's awesome. And for, for a long time I was thinking, we'll just have to get through this year and then we'll be free. <laughs> um, now it's like, okay, year two of rebuilding, <laughs> surviving and rebuilding. Um, but, uh, but God's got this, as the hashtag that I see all over the place says. Um, so, yeah. Any Q and A? And if you think of something later, uh, by all means. Um, oh, you'll see some question marks. What would you What would you think about a bonfire at the Potter's place doing something Christmassy? Would that be yeah. Fun? Anyways. On my calendar like that. Put it on a question from there. Yeah. Okay. You might have more questions for me. So if you think of other questions for Josh or me, you can ask both of them. Um, but I wanted to just break down a little bit more of like logistical aspects of like kind of how we'll do our gatherings, how we'll make sure they happen, how we'll kind of make sure everybody's getting plugged in and involved and what they want to get involved in. So, um, Last, I wanted to just share one little thing that I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, a few like leadership retreats ago, maybe a year ago or something, you know, we just realized that where we're at as a body, as DCF, is that whether you're an elder, whether you're a deacon, whether you're a child, whether you're whoever, like we're we're all in this together, we're all the team, we're all doing this. And so a lot of you did experience that change from kind of like a more like not it wasn't really closed but more of like a closed group of people who would make sure we did all the rhythm make sure we got all the things done to where I was just emailing everyone and saying hey who wants to do this and who wants to do that and so we kind of experimented this last spring with like creating a hospitality team and like um, creating more pathways than just saying, hey, anybody, whoever you are, can, can like volunteer and participate. I feel like that went really well overall. I really like being able to create all those, you know, spots for people to plug in. So we're going to keep doing that, um, like just the way that I'll be emailing everybody. I'll be trying to just collect, you know, as new students come and new people, I'll be just like trying to get everybody's emails. I even put... Um, my phone number and Josh's phone numbers in your thing so you know if for some reason somebody doesn't have our phone number which I think everybody here does I think I have everybody in here but we'll just be getting that information out to people we'll be really encouraging people to sign up for the village post as we go for the next few weeks um, so that everybody gets the right information um, but how it's gonna look like for a gathering is that instead of just kind of the rhythms during the gathering, as we experienced this last spring, we kind of looked at it as like, there's gathering rhythms that kind of happen during the gathering, but then there's these support teams or even these rhythms that happen on the, you know, around the gathering. Like, there's no boundaries, you know? So, anyways, we're gonna continue with the idea of the hospitality team. So I'm going to just kind of go through a few of these things. And what that's going to mean is that we'll need one person to sign up on the email or the spreadsheet or let me know or whatever prior to willing to come set up that table. Um, we might go to two tables eventually because we have, you know, two areas. We might need two people who are willing to greet. Um, but we'll start with one. Um, who will pass out the packets, who will just do those few things and greet and everything, and then put things away. For now, we don't have any electricity here at this park, so we're keeping everything unplugged, which means we won't need any sound, we won't need any sound setting up or anything like that. If in the future we add that or we develop that, then that'll, that might just get added into this whole hospitality idea. Uh, we do have a music team though, Monica and I are going to hold down the music yeah. on a rotating basis for now and then, you know, we're hoping to get other people who will participate with us um, in that. So, that's great. That's just what it is. We'll keep it acoustic for a while. 
um, if anybody talks to anybody, finds out who they, you know, may or may not want to be involved in music, send them Monica's way. She's always willing to just have these conversations and talk to people about that. Um, a ministry team that we're kind of bringing back as like now a gathering support rhythm idea is children's ministry. We want to be able to do something for the kids during this teaching time. Um, if any of you have been around a lot during the summer, you've seen a lot of new families with a whole bunch of younger kids running around, which has been really awesome. Um, so we want to be able to do a lesson with them and keep it very simple, something that they can just go over there and do, you know. Um, I'm playing around a little bit with just a few curriculum ideas where I could just do a tiny bit of prep in the week, bring it in a bin for the person who signs up and they know what story they were reading, they know what they were doing. Um, I want to start really simple and I want to make it just as easy for anybody to just volunteer and sign up for just as they would do for like hospitality, just so that we can create you know, more interaction with people. Um, so that's something that we're developing that's kind of new that we're bringing back. To talk more about during the gatherings, we'll obviously continue doing some of the normal things that we've been all doing, like this passing. Um, so we're going to still be meeting somebody every week to give some testimony or declaration of peace about that. Um, we've let everybody kind of myself included have a little bit of a break this summer with like the premeditated aspect of getting ready for the gatherings. I haven't asked people prior to like be prepared or think about what they'd like to do but I want to get back to that. Um, you know it's really nice when somebody has thought about it prior and you know shares a scripture that's meaningful to them or you know whatever. And I think that um, is a really easy, not easy sometimes but um, it's a very public role that happens in our gatherings every Sunday to where even a new person might see that and realize, wow, that's a way that I can become involved is by signing up for that. So I like, I'm really excited about that. We also will need somebody to sign up to do announcements every week. Uh, I will email you all of the information you need to know about announcements if you choose to do that. I'm also more than willing to do announcements on Sundays when I am not leading our church. <laughs> so I will try not to do it if I don't have to. So uh, we'll obviously, well not obviously, I should have said that. We, Josh is going to talk a little bit more about communion. We're obviously still going to be doing communion is what I was going to say. We're going to be kind of trying to reestablish a little bit more of the way we did communion in the building at Hall Plaza as opposed to how we've done it um, this last year. So Josh is going to walk us through that in a little bit. That will still require an elder and a deacon each Sunday to sign up and participate in that. Um, so that's kind of like the only rhythm that will have an asterisk on it, I guess. Uh, at our unity gatherings, like Josh mentioned, the one of their core elders kind of does the equivalent coordinating that I do with BCF, and so I'll be working with her on like getting her to get a couple people to volunteer to sign up for like doing the gospel reading or whatever. Um, we'll we'll still do like the gospel reading as just a reading at House of Judah, even though we're going to do the birthday here, and so we'll only need a couple people and they'll bring a couple people like Josh was saying um, when we do the unity gatherings at House of Judah. So that'll be really cool. Um, we'll also be able to do children's ministry there and we'll use their classroom space that they have which will be nice because if we for some reason want to plan something that will be more of a classroom then we can do it on those Sundays when we know we'll be in a building with like chairs and tables and stuff. Um, one thing Josh and I want to really bring back is our pre-gathering huddle time that we don't have a name for, but that's really awesome. That you know, and I think when we were doing in-person gatherings at Christ the Redeemer and House of Judah, um, we knew that 
just gathering together and being together and doing whatever we're gonna do was like awesome and special and we didn't have as much prep that was going into that so we didn't really necessarily need that although in retrospect we probably still needed like that gathering prayer together time before so we really want to establish that again so that would be like 5 30 which would be a half an hour prior to our six o'clock start time here so if you are an elder or a deacon or have signed up for some rhythm and i'll probably remind all those people you know come at 5 30 so so that we can have that time where we can all get on the same page and pray together and just be prepared for the gathering time which i think is just like a really good centering thing for us to do um those are all the things i have on my paper so if anybody has any questions about any of that please ask otherwise we're just gonna keep emailing everybody every week <laughs> Oh, the QR code is the calendar in, like, Google Sheet form, other than the pink form that Josh gave you, um, that will kind of have, like, the slots for you to sign up in, kind of like how we've done before, but it looks just a little bit different. I kind of reworked it. Um, so I just thought if anybody wanted to see that, you can see it, but I'll link, I'll send everybody that in, like, an email as well. Um, that'll be where we sign up. And it'll have... Hopefully, everything that we do as DCF, not just our gathering, in there so that we can all follow the schedule together. So, those are the logistical things to share. You're not missing anything? Nope. Okay. So, thanks. Alright, so we're gonna be making tweaks and adjustments as we as we go along and as we um, as we grow um, and so I can just see like all of this terrace grass um, filled with lawn chairs and blankets and, um, and over there too and over there too and um, I just want to have this echo in the heart of the city. What's that Jesus Culture song? Let Echo thinking. is what it's called. I'm about that lately. Right? <laughs> um, from the city to the nations, yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty excited. Um, and just walking by my faith and trust. So, thanks for being flexible. And um, there's been a lot of changes and tweaks over these, these last many months. And um, we'll see, we'll see what the next many months hold for us. Um, but let's let's bring all of this um, before the Lord in prayer, and then we'll.